Grenades, grenades, grenades. They have been around since the very beginning of Call of Duty, and obviously some are better than others, and I'm not talking about the, the blackout grenade spam. What's up, everybody? Chaos here. Today on the COD History Top 10, we are going to be checking out 10 of the best grenades in Call of Duty franchise. Now, this is my personal list, and I'm only going to be looking at lethal grenades, so there won't be any nine bangs or willy peats or anything like that on here. If you want, we can do a top 10 best tactical grenades in the future, so be sure to let me know what is your favorite lethal grenade in the comment section. This month's giveaway is for a brand new PlayStation 4 console. All you have to do to enter is like the video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn on those notifications, and tweet me why you want to win it with your Twitter handle included. Okay, at number 10, I'm going with the canister bomb and ghost. I bet nobody saw that even coming, right? A very underrated piece of equipment from Call of Duty Ghost that did not get a lot of attention in multiplayer due to how long it took to use, but it was actually pretty devastating if you could use it correctly. The canister bomb is insanely powerful, but it takes quite a long time to actually go off. So you kind of have to be part, you have to, you have to know what you're doing, okay? And kind of be uh, aware of your surroundings when you use it. And since you can't throw it very far, it will often result in you dying as well. But if you managed to get the canister bomb on an objective point while enemies were on it and you found a group of people camping, well, guess what? It was game over for him. The canister bomb definitely made up for its awkward handling with its insane blast radius and its power. And I, I think it's a good underdog to kick off this list. At number nine, the explosive drone in Advanced Warfare. I'm trying to hit you guys out of left field here. It, okay, AW had a lot of really cool lethal and tactical grenades, and one of those was the explosive drone. This thing would fire from your exosuit, and it would stick to the very first thing that it hit, and it would lurk there. It would just, it would, it would wait there. It would, it would target enemies, and then it would lock onto them. Then it chases them down before exploding on them. Much like an ID in Call of Duty Ghost, the explosive drone was extremely annoying and super difficult to avoid once it was actually locked on. But this made great, great use for securing objectives, as you could fire one near a flag, and it would immediately get rid of whoever tried to secure it. And sure, it was pretty obvious, I mean, it was pretty obvious due to how big and easy it was to spot, but if you put it behind cover or a corner, if you got a little creative with your placement, it was a great thing to have with you on any, any of the OBJ modes in Advanced Warfare. At number eight, cluster grenades in Infinite Warfare. Freaking cluster grenades in Call of Duty Blackout, man. If there's one thing Infinite Warfare did really, really well, it was the variety and their weaponry. There was some really cool stuff in the game, and one of those was the cluster grenade. This baby was basically a blend of a traditional frag grenade and the cluster grenade from Black Ops 4. Now, the IW cluster was a frag that could be cooked, but the longer you cooked it, the more mini grenades would pop out of it once it blew up, which rewarded you for kind of learning the timing of the cook, and it was also risky since you would have to stand out in the open without your weapon while you cooked it. It's definitely a cool addition to the game, and I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back in the next Infinity War game, whether that be Modern Warfare 4, what if it was, what if it was actually Infinite Warfare 2? Sticking with the Infinite Warfare love, man, we don't give a lot of that on this series, but we're doing it right now. The Plasma Grenades. Another cool Infinite Warfare grenade, the Plasma Grenade was essentially a futuristic Molotov cocktail, as it was a grenade, and then upon detonation, it would erupt in a shower of plasma and cover the area, I mean, just cover everywhere in a few seconds while damaging anybody in the splash radius and killing anybody that it hit with a direct impact. Now, the plasma was great in hardcore modes for locking down those lanes on the map and for flushing out domination flags, since the plasma would kill you almost instantly. And in core modes, it was still extremely helpful in objective modes like hardpoint, as it would give you a good understanding of how many people were around the hardpoint, and it would drain a little bit of their health before you and your team pushed in to clear the area out. I wasn't a fan of Infinite Warfare. Everybody on this channel knows that, but... It's clear that Infinity Ward had a lot of fun coming up with all the weapons and grenades in the game. At number six, the Molotov cocktails in Blackout. These do-it-yourself grenades have appeared in quite a few Call of Duty games, and they made a return in the Blackout Battle Royale mode in Black Ops 4, where they're arguably more powerful than ever before. Spacing and movement is extremely important in a Battle Royale game. So, the cocktails became a super powerful tool for locking down choke points, flushing out campers, and completely erasing escape routes from houses and buildings. Plus, the damage, well, it's pretty generous and it lasts for quite some time. So if you hit somebody with it and they stop to heal, they're going to be a sitting duck for you to finish off. Definitely deserving of a spot. And if you hit somebody with it, the first instinct they have is to try to heal up. At number five. 
C4 in Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 2. And I know it's technically not a grenade, but it still fits the bill on the definition of what we're talking about because you can throw it. So I'm putting it on here. It's my list. I'm cheating. Now the C4 debuted in COD 4, but it got a huge makeover in Modern Warfare 3. So you could throw it further and detonate it much faster, which would allow you to do some pretty cheesy stuff with it, like toss it over a wall and blow everyone up or plop it in a doorway and kill everyone around you before they knew what was going on. This version of C4 came back in Black Ops 2. It was arguably even more annoying in that game due to how the maps were designed and how much easier it was to get multi-kills at choke points with it. Which version of the C4 was your favorite? Modern Warfare 3 or Black Ops 2? And it, it, it actually is a grenade. It's an air bomb. You could throw it and then you can detonate it. And that's what you do with a grenade. Well, some grenades, not all grenades. At number four, we have to go with the good old classic true and true frag grenade in World at War. Now, if you've ever played the World at War campaign, you definitely know why the frags are on here. While the grenades are definitely powerful in multiplayer, the frag spam in the World War campaign is absurd to the point that it's almost become a meme in the COD community just how many times you would die over and over again from enemies just chucking them nonstop at you. It's like they had an indefinite, just an infinite load of them in a bag uh, strapped across their chest. It was definitely frustrating, and it made World at War one of the hardest campaigns in the entire series to finish on the dreaded veteran difficulty. So how many of you were actually able to do that? Did you ever finish the campaign? Did you ever finish it on its highest setting? At number three, the freaking cluster grenade in Black Ops 4. Raise your hand if you've been getting annoyed with this grenade in Black Ops 4 and Blackout. I'm raising my hand right now adamantly, okay? The Cluster Grenade is a weird hybrid of the Simtex from other COD games and the War Machine from Black Ops 3. You heard me right. You throw it, sticks to a surface, then it blows up, and it spits out a whole bunch of mini grenades that will bounce around for a few seconds, then deal really generous damage once they explode. The Cluster Grenade is limited to battery in Black Ops 4 multiplayer, but in Blackout, it's fair game. It's one of the most powerful items in the game due to how amazing it is for clearing out houses and punishing people for camping next to a window. So, how many times? Do you think you have died to a cluster grenade in Blackout Battle Royale? At number two, Simtex in Modern Warfare 2. Now, the Simtex slash Sticky Grenade has become a staple of the COD series ever since it was introduced in Modern Warfare 2, but part of the reason why people loved it so much is its original appearance, and it was due to how insanely powerful it was. Now, due to the amount of attention One Man Army and New Tubes got in Modern Warfare 2, a lot of people forget just how devastating the Simtex was. It was a time-sticky grenade that could stick to anything in the game, including players, and it would detonate after a certain amount of time and had a very generous blast radius. While it didn't always kill everyone in the radius, it still did a great amount of damage. It would give you a hit marker so you could throw it in a window and know exactly how many people were in there. Plus, since the detonation timer started from the time you threw it, you could actually learn the angles and spacing of it so you could get it to blow up right when it landed, just like what people would do if they were cooking a regular frag grenade. Definitely, definitely worthy of the number two spot today. And at number one, I had to. I had to pay tribute, okay? The frags in COD 4. The tried and true frag grenade from Call of Duty 4 in Modern Warfare Remastered. Now, these things may not be all that fancy or special or have a f just crazy name. What made them worthy of the number one spot was how easy it was to buff them with perks. Not only was there this annoying Sonic Boom perk that would increase the damage, but there was also the infamous Frag Times 3 perk that would give you three of them, and since those two perks were in different categories, you could use them together to create one of the most devastating perk combos in COD history. Plus, on top of that, the default COD 4 frags had a huge blast radius compared to any other COD frag grenades, and since the base health in COD 4 was so low, well, it was super easy to just launch these things across the map at objectives for easy kills. Simple, effective, and arguably overpowered with the right perks. So in my opinion, the COD 4 frag grenade is the best grenade in Call of Duty history. You guys let me know if you think I got it right. You let me know if you think I got it wrong. Let me know what your favorite one is in the comment section. Take a second, drop a like, make sure you share the video around, turn on those notifications, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you soon.